Well, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the Q&A right after Echoes of the Empire uh, Beyond Genghis Khan. And um, I hope you enjoyed the film. Um, this film is available to be voted on uh, for an audience award. So please take the time to do that. And um, we'll be announcing those awards on our closing day on March 13th. Um, I want to start off by thanking our sponsors of the film, our friends at Black Horse Espresso and Bakery. Thank you very much to them. And also our major sponsors of the festival are BHE Renewables, American General Media, and KSBY. So thank you for their loyal support. Uh, we would not be able to pull this festival off without you. Um, we're very excited to have the director of the film, Robert Lieberman, here with us today. And welcome, first of all, and uh, welcome back to our festival, I should even say. We had your film, your last film in this trilogy, which was the second one, Anchor Awaits, in our festival. An Anchor and, Awakens, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, oh, sorry, shot. Anchor Awakens, no, thank you. Right. Shot in Cambodia, yeah, yeah. and now, yeah. We're in, now we're in Mongolia. Uh, it's amazing, and you do an incredibly good job of taking us to these places and making us uh, understand so much more about the culture, the history, and the place, and they're so beautifully shot. So, um, so congratulations on the whole trilogy. Um, and thank you for bringing this one to us. Um, really appreciate it. This is a sneak preview. So do you want to just explain kind of what that is? Sure. So what we're doing is we're still holding back general release. And what we normally do is open in theaters around the United States. I'll go in, you know, New York, LA, Seattle, you know, Chicago, and, you know, we open the theater. I'll do a Q and A the first night and then move on to the next city. But uh, these are unique times. So what we're doing now is we are in a very, very limited way through an art house. We've released it. Um, we're going, giving a sneak preview through uh, San Luis Obispo. And so, you know, get the buzz going prior to the release. So you get to see it early, you know, before anybody else. We're thrilled, honestly. And um, I, I, we've had some films in our festival uh, shot in Mongolia and about some various issues. We had one about horse racing in Mongolia, which was yep. beautiful. So I haven't been there myself, but I, I know from seeing these films how gorgeous it is. And your film um, shows how beautiful the country is. And, um, and the movie itself is beautifully shot, too. So what made you want to focus on Mon Mongolia this time? Why Mongolia? Well, it's like Mount Everest because it's there and it's really not accessible. It, it's a t it was a toughest film I ever worked on because there are literally very few roads. It's you're on tracks and you're going, you know, sometimes eight hours and just being bounced to hell. And but it, it's a very unique place. It's like nowhere else. And it has its problems and we are addressing them. Um, one of the pro, you know, one of the problems is the pollution in the winter by using coal. Uh, you know, it's the most polluted city on the planet in the winter. Uh, on the and then there's strange things about Mongolia, like for instance, the women are more educated than the men, um, and they're the ones who get the university degrees. Well, they think, oh, the boys they can take care of the herds, you know, and what are you going to do with a girl? Oh, send her to school. And so they send her to school, and then, of course, she ends up in university, gets the degrees. And one of the problems in Mongolia is for the women to find suitable mates who are of an equal, you know, educational level. So this is a real problem for Mongolia. Um, I love it because it's three million people, and I think it's the size of Texas, million and a half or million something live in the city. And the rest are, uh, you know, live live on the steppe and are herders or reindeer herders if you're up in the north. Um, I don't know. It's, it's uh, it is so unique, and I think this is the most of the trio. You know, they call it Myanmar Angkor Awakens. In my opinion, and I'm getting a lot of early reviews. This is the most beautiful film we've ever done. And if you're stuck inside, like every. <laughs> like everybody is, this is, uh, let me take you on a trip to Mongolia. Okay. And look, I'm a novelist. That's really what I've been for, you know, since God was a little girl. Uh, uh, and these films really, I think, are a novelist's eye view of a country. 
So I, it's through my eyes. You know, let's let's face it. Documentaries are not even handed. You know, the director's letting you only see through a keyhole. Well, the keyhole you're seeing through is essentially my keyhole as a novelist. And I'm a storyteller. And I want to take you into this country and show you what I see. And I mean, it, so here's how we work in our studio, which is very unusual. It started, I used to use crews, but then it started in Burma where you were not a lot of film. And so I started filming. And I, what I, essentially I shoot, I take sound and I make coffee and sandwiches. And we develop, like we're doing right now, kind of intimate discussion. And people open up in, in ways they would not with the crew. When I'm, you know, sometimes I have to appear on camera and there are lights and I just freeze up. You know, I can squeeze out something, but it's not, these become very natural. And I found that when you're at the end of an interview, that's when the interesting things come. And when you turn off the camera, you get the best. And so I always tell people, uh, okay, we're finished now. I'm, I'm gonna turn off the camera and I let it run. <laughs> I'm, I'm a very sneaky guy. <laughs> of course, then I'll tell them, by the way, we, we, that was the best, you know, you, is it okay if we use it? So, uh, so I bring back the footage to the studio and you know, I'm terminally ADD. So, you know, doing editing, which is frame by frame and audio clip by audio clip, I don't, I can't edit, I hate it, but I have really good people I work with. I work with uh, Deborah Horde, who runs photosynthesis production and PSP has animators. As you'll see, there's animations in this, there's drawings, you know, lots of sound work. Uh, and the music I think is very rich in this film. Uh, so yeah. we got a lot, Mongolians, by the way, are highly, as you'll see, if you see the movie, they're very musical. Uh, and I was surprised because when I started filming, I ended up at the opera ballet and their opera is world class. Their ballet is world class. And where does that come from? You know, opera on the step? Well, it's thanks to the Russians. You know, the Russians killed, I don't know, 20,000 uh, llamas and other people when, when they took over. It, when it became essentially within the Soviet sphere. And, but they did leave the culture and arts. And so it's a very complex place. You, you're, you know, I lived in Czechoslovakia, the former Czechoslovakia during 89, 90, the year of the revolution. And so it feels Eastern Europe, it's very strange. It's, yeah, it's like Eastern a real mixture. European, it's Asian, <laughs> but people, they don't think of themselves as Asian and the language is not Asian. It's a Turkic language. Mongolian is, and I can't speak it. I can usually learn a language or something. Uh, this is really very strange, very strange pronunciation. So it's a kind of Turkic language. And what we're doing is we're covering the history of the country, sweeping back from Chinggis Geng Khan, as they call it, or Genghis Khan, all the way through the Soviet period and up to the present modern day. And this is what we've done in Ankur Awakens with, you know, we've gone through the Kaima Rouge period, uh, you know, the ancient history, but it's not educational. This is not an educational film. <laughs> Let me emphasize it's, that. No, it's a very entertaining uh, look at, 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 even though you're learning. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I mean, I think like maybe some people that, that started watching it thought they were going to watch a travelogue too. So it's like an interesting your movie is an interesting mix of all of those things. And plus, uh, I think people who may think they know about Genghis Khan are learning a lot of new things uh, about him as well, which I, I mean, I didn't know very much. And I think the way you covered that history was really fascinating. Well, that's Jack Weatherford, who's one of the stars of the film. And Jack Weatherford wrote the bestseller, uh, Genghis Khan, The Making of the Modern World. Wonderful to read. It's storytelling at its best. And he appears in the film and he is a storyteller. So he takes us through that. We have other stars. Oyuna is a, a, a politician, an activist. She may become president of Mongolia. There's a real chance. She will def former member of parliament and, and a cabinet minister. Uh, so she takes us out into the step. Uh, yeah, this is, the, I, you know, I, I, I'm 
tooting our own horn, but it isn't my horn. It really well, you is should. Horn. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, I'm in love with the film. I think this is the best film that I've ever, I've worked on many films. I did one in Ethiopia in 85 during the famine. I've done one about growing up in Kew Gardens, Queens, a child of Holocaust survivors. We were all German speaking, all the kids. But this is hands down the best film I've ever worked on. I just wanted to ask because you you said you're a journalist and I know you teach at Cornell. Um, no, I'm, a, I'm a physicist. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> What's well, the same okay. thing? It, right. So what? I teach physics. I've taught math. Uh, there's no that's depth. A, that's even more amazing. Okay, so I'm just there's I no was going to ask you how did how did you become such a good cinematographer? I mean, these are huge leaps from from one you know sort of. Yeah. Uh, well, I, you know, I, I did a lot of still photography, so you learn how to frame and things like that. And I'm an engineer, electrical engineer also. So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, I can work with the technology. Uh, the thing is, you, you're, you're good with technology, but you also have a, a really great artist's eye. And that, so those are a lot of parts of your brain firing off at the same time. So congratulations. People weren't, <laughs> you, you know, people weren't meant to do just one thing as you've discovered in life, right? And, and Americans are always True. reinventing themselves. And people ask me, like, what are you gonna do when you grow up? And I'm still working on that. So I'm, I'm well, actually going back to novel writing, I'm just finishing a huge book that I started 36 years ago and I've been working on. Um, so by the way, if your listeners are interested, if they're readers, they can go to my website, which is roberthlieberman.com. Now, what, what is coming up next as far as uh, films? You have a book happening that could yeah, be- Yeah, well, I have books, but I'm working in Paris on an animated film with Didier Brunner, who's a five-time Academy Award nominated producer. It's an animated film. It's called The Nazis, My Father and Me, and it's based on a novel, a uh, new novel. And uh, if you go to Vimeo, you can see a teaser of the Nazis, my father and me. Uh, Ooh, yeah. So I, I did the screenplay with the director and I think it's going to production this summer. It's a big budget film. And I think uh, Netflix is, is it's gonna be a Netflix original. The French company Gaumont is doing it. I, I got Wow. Lucky. Yeah, yeah. That's really exciting. Yeah, so your life is exciting and then you die. <laughs> you're really <laughs> you're very inspiring and um i just really just want to say thank you so much for sharing this film with us the sneak preview is very exciting and um i hope i hope everyone enjoyed it as much as i did because i i loved it and so did all our screeners so thank you good